3AM space BE7KI. What kind of mathematical equation is that? No, it's actually a, uh, a new planet we just discovered. No, it's, it's Airbnb. What's up, guys? Welcome to another Mark Ashen video trying to dissect and explain to you some very uh, beautiful, intricate things about the Arabic language. One of which is this. Before I jump in, though, let me just give a shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare. Guys, I know how much you love to learn and grow, and Skillshare is a fantastic platform for that. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes ranging from photography, fashion, music, web design. If you have a hobby or dream you want to take to the next level, they offer classes exactly to help you with that. Like how to mix and edit songs, how to develop writing skills, classes on Photoshop with professional and dedicated teachers. I learned most of my video and editing skills online and I'm still learning like Photoshop or audio editing, marketing, which is what I'd be using Skillshare for now. It's also made specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and grow in the direction you want. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And for you guys, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So go check it out. So, Arab easy, Arab easy, otherwise known as the Arabic chat alphabet. Yes. Because we in the Middle East are very adaptive. You know, we like to, uh, we see this and we're like, ah, it works, we use it. Khalas. And uh, especially with the rise of the internet and specifically chatting, we developed something called the Arabic chat alphabet. So someone who's well versed in Arabic would read this very simply as Ade or Ande or Am Behke An, right? But a non Arabic speaker who has no clue about this secret advanced code language would read this as 3AM, BE, 7KI, 3AN. And some of you were like, is this a typo, Mark? It's so weird. And I was like, no, laughing emoji, haha. -ha. It's uh, something called the Arabic chat alphabet, Arab easy. So to break it down for you guys, it's essentially the Arabic language as we speak it, but using the alphabet and some numbers, numbers that would correspond to some extent to the Arabic letter equivalent in terms of how it looks. For example, the letter 3 resembles the letter AN, right? So we decided, hey, let's use it and put it in the alphabet. So 3EIN became AN. What an intelligent fusion of an adaptive East meets West. Rah! Even though the alphabet is originally from the Middle East, which would make this an East West back to East fusion. Next, you have the letter, or really number two, which replaces the Hemze, which is a glottal stop. Ugh. Now, in certain contexts, it also replaces the Kaf. Like in Lebanon, we stop saying Kaf. Like we don't say Balkika, we say Da'ia. So it became Da2I2A. Another common one is the seven. Seven is similar to the Ha letter in Arabic. So we use it for things like Har, 7AR. Haywen, Hak Dahre, huh? That's it, like that. Yeah, like that. Very good. Now, Arab easy is not formal the way standard Arabic is formal, so it's a bit flexible, which is fine because it's all about being understood. And it's flexible in the sense also that different regions of the Arab world will use some numbers and others won't. Like in certain cases, Tayyib, for example, good or delicious. Tayyib, we just write T A Y E B. But in certain places, you might write six because it kind of looks like the ta. But I've never done it that way. I haven't seen anyone in Lebanon do it that way. So it tends to be a little different per region. If you guys want to know more, I teach Lebanese Arabic now on Patreon for $10 a month. All right. Now, this is one cool Arabic code language. But I've got another one that you may not have heard. It's called Arabiguity. What? Arabiguity. That's right, I just made that up. It's basically Arab ambiguity. Yes, yeah. What does that mean? Well, to do a little revision, a lot of you have heard, inshallah, or bukra, right? Yes, that's an example of Arabiguity. Because inshallah means if God is willing, hopefully, or just never. So we're getting a PS5? Inshallah, eh, inshallah. But there's more. That's right, we have many more ways we can be mysterious and ambiguous and speak like magicians. For example, shuismo. 
لك جيب لي جيب لي هذا شو اسمه هناك That's right. What's it called? شو اسمه? What's its name? جيب لي شو اسمه? Your parents probably told that to you when you were young and probably still do. And when they say it, they're so it's so clear in their head that they expect you telepathically to absorb what it means. And the funny part is that sometimes you do. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'll get it. How? No, oh, it's telepathy. جيب لي شو اسمه هناك? Yeah, I got it. And you have other times where you start sweating from stress because you're like, what is it? What is it? What is it? That's another one. It's something like, whatever it is. I had no idea. The thing, whatever. Which is even more clear. Then, of course, we have this. Yes, this beautiful little artifact, uh, otherwise known as the Sirmege. Yes, this can be used to uh, properly discipline your children and educate them. A lot of knowledge can be passed on to you from your parents through this vehicle. It's also used as a homing weapon. Usually uh, the mother never misses, which is fascinating. And of course, it can be used to refer to anything, usually to help you also express irritation. Like, Jibli Sirmeye Onik. And of course, please, if you are told to bring the Sirmeye, do not assume it is actually this they're looking for. Because if you bring that to them, it's going to be coming back to you in the face. Don't try and troll your parents. Now imagine you start combining them. It's really a rabbit hole. And there you go. These are just a few examples of code languages. If you have more, please let me know. Whether in Arabic or in another language. It's full of fantastic, artistic, poetic, unclear, secret ways of communicating. It's beautiful. Don't forget to check out Patreon if you want to learn Lebanese lessons. Tell everybody about the Lebanese lessons and join us if you want something fun, effective, funny, entertaining. Allah. Also, we're going to do intermediate and advanced very soon. But you guys need to help us out. Go to Patreon and help us reach 500 patrons. As soon as we reach that goal, we'll be able to kickstart the intermediate and advanced. So I know a lot of you have been asking and looking for that level of lessons. So you can support us now by joining and pushing us closer to the goal and spreading the message. So we can help everyone connect with Lebanon and the Middle East because it's beautiful. My current students, love you guys. You guys are doing amazing as usual. Also want to give a shout out to one of our biggest contributors, Yemen Zain. I love you. I see you. Thank you for your support from the start. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe if you're new. If you love everything Lebanon, the Middle East and culture, this is your place. And as usual, Menchufko. Take care. This is a rising picture. Duh.